When we try to understand the motions of objects, we ordinarily identify an object, try to find the forces on the object, and then make some conclusion about its motion, whether it be accelerated or uniform motion. But when we place objects into fluids, for example, and we try to uh, identify the significant forces on an object as it sits in the fluid, we usually identify the, the, the weight of the object, a significant gravitational force. We may uh, uh, ask ourselves whether there are any significant electrical forces because the object is charged. Um, but then we try to identify the contact forces, the forces that are exerted on the object because of things that it touches. But if you place the object in the fluid, then the fluid touches the object at an essentially infinite number of places, as if there were an infinite number of contact forces that you had to account for in trying to understand whether the object, uh, whether the forces on the object were balanced or unbalanced. And uh, since an infinite number is impossible for a finite mind to deal with, uh, we often introduce a, defi a, a derived concept, uh, derived from the idea of force. And we call it pressure, the force per unit area that uh, some object exerts uh, by contact. Um, sometimes uh, the idea of pressure is perhaps the, the better way to think of what's happening in a particular situation, even better than trying to imagine the individual forces that come to, to, to bear. For example, here's a very uh, heavy piece of steel. Uh, and here's a, a, a piece of paper, a, wa a towel from the uh, washroom down the hall. Now, we wouldn't ordinarily think of that towel, uh, paper towel, being capable of supporting a large weight like that piece of steel. However, if we think in terms of pressure, uh, then we realize that if the piece of steel has a very large area, then uh, the paper towel exerts a relatively small pressure because the force is spread out over a large area. And the pressure being relatively small is within the capability of the piece of paper uh, to exert. And uh, as you see, the piece of steel is supported by that uh, piece of paper. But if you turn it over and ask the piece of paper to exert the same force that is to, to balance the weight of the, of the uh, steel, but to do it spread over the very, very small area, which is the area of the points of those three nails. Then the pressure this time is very, very large. The force per unit area that the paper would have to exert in order to balance the weight of the uh, piece of steel is an enormous value, and the paper is incapable of exerting that kind of pressure. And so the object then falls through the piece of paper.